I'll hand over to Tim and uh, Tim's been a Sydney Drumley user group coordinator for many, many years now. Um, so he's a familiar face in the community. Um, but I, I know that he's uh, going to be doing some quite interesting things with this. Um, so I've just got pinged with some people that are wanting to, to come in. So I've just got to go to the Zoom link again. But uh, Tim, off you go and uh, talk soon. Um, can everyone mute their microphones? And um, if you find that you're getting lagged, turn off your video and that will um, uh, improve the signal. So talk to you soon. I'll just share my screen. All right, everyone can see that okay? Oh, it's all good. Perfect. Okay, for, for those who saw my talk at the Joomla Day Brisbane back in August last year, um, it's not exactly the same presentation. Uh, I've updated the example to spice it up a bit. And also there's some changes in, in the way that the Joomla workflow works compared to the beta, in the current beta version compared to the alpha version back then. So um, I might point out some of those differences as we go along. So let's start out by defining what workflow is for, for anyone who isn't aware. Um, it's, this is a, a good explanation that I found online. It's a sequence of, of steps um, that a piece of the content passes from initiation to completion. Now, the Joomla 4 workflow is built all around articles, um, but we can do so much more with it, which you'll, you'll see as this presentation goes along. So let me just, uh, yep, yeah. okay. Looking at uh, Joomla 3 workflow, um, out of the box, Joomla 3 has very simplistic workflow. Um, on a basic level, you can configure it so that you have an author that creates an article and they uh, submit it. It goes into the unpublished state by default and then that can trigger an email to an administrator. Now, that would be all the people in the administrators group. It's not just one individual person. And uh, one of those administrators would open up that article and uh, review it and then hit publish. And, and that article would then be published. If we look at the, the content states available in, in Joomla 3, um, we've got the, the basic publish, unpublish, trash and archive. And, and each of those states um, you can go from one state to another. So if you're in publish, you can go straight to archive. If you're in unpublished, you can go to trash. Um, they all move directly to each other. Then there's a couple of other states. Um, you can unarchive something that's been archived, but you obviously can't unarchive something that's published because it's not archived. And uh, same with the trash. When you've trashed something, you can empty the trash to permanently delete it, but you can't do that for something that's published or unpublished. But what happens if we want a more sophisticated workflow? Uh, for example, if you were um, publishing some content on your website and you wanted to have one person uh, create the article, another person do some editing and, and fix it up, then it might go to a, a proofreader to go in and check spelling and grammar and, and that sort of thing. Um, then it may need to go to a legal department to make sure that you're complying with laws and, and not saying anything you shouldn't. And, and then it becomes published. Now, if you wanted to do that in Joomla 3, um, you wouldn't be able to do it out of the box. And, and then you can take it one step further. What if you want to do something really complicated and, and have a, a really complicated workflow that um, you can have a piece of content move through a variety of states and going back and forth and uh, skipping steps and, and all sorts of uh, fancy things. So this is an example of, of a possible complex workflow that you might have for an article or, or any piece of content. But we obviously can't achieve anything that sophisticated in, in Joomla 3. Um, but in Joomla 4, now that we've got the, the new workflow feature, we can do some really fancy stuff. So the publishing workflow feature in, in Joomla 4, it replaces the static states of, of published, unpublished, trashed and archive. And 
it gives it a more generic approach so you can customize it and make it work however you like. Um, out of the box, it works exactly the same as Joomla 3. So if you don't care about workflow, you can just not turn on that feature and, and use it exactly the same way as Joomla 3. But if you want to uh, have your own custom workflows, you can uh, configure it. So uh, th this way you can easily customize the workflow to, to suit um, how you want the articles to work. Now, just a little bit of terminology here. When I'm talking about states or stages, I'm talking about the published, unpublished trash archive, that sort of state. And when I'm talking about transitions, that's how we move from one state to another. So how we go from unpublished to published or how we go from published to trash, that sort of thing. So in, in this example today, what we're going to do is we're going to build a little application. And um, if you remember back at my uh, Joomla Day Brisbane talk, I did a, a simple leave application form where someone could submit uh, a leave application that goes through to their manager, then through to payroll and, and then to completion. So I thought I'd mix it up and, and create a new example in, in this presentation. So what I've done is a simple support request system. So a, a customer can create a support request and it can be escalated through the, the various stages. So we've just got some basic fields here, um, a, a, a title for it, a, a description of what the problem is. And then there's some fields that the people solve where you can fill out the solution, the completed date. And then we've got the status that shows that transitional state. Now, if you look at it from a, a workflow point of view, this is the, the, the way that the, the um, piece of content is going to flow through our, our workflow. So we start out that the customer will create the support request and that will send to the level one help desk person. Now, once that level one help desk person receives uh, that request, they have a number of choices here. Um, normally, uh, they, they might escalate it to the level two support so that they can solve the problem. But sometimes, uh, the problem that the customer has submitted, uh, it's something that's completely out of scope for, for what this uh, help desk is trying to achieve. So maybe it's a website support help desk and the customer's asked for help with their mobile phone or, or with um, something that's completely unrelated to, to the service they're offering. So he might decide to reject the, the request. Um, a, another scenario is that someone submits a request and they just don't provide enough information for the, the help desk person to be able to help them out. So um, maybe they, they submit a request to say, my website's broken and they don't provide any information. So the help desk guy might come back saying, okay, um, how is it broken? Is it uh, not working on multiple computers? Are you getting any error messages? Um, just all, all the basic sort of questions that they would ask. And once the customer's provided that information, can then go back to their help desk to then decide what to do with it. So if it's something really simple, maybe like a password reset or, or, or something that the help desk is capable of doing, um, they can immediately solve this problem and put it straight to the complete state and, um, and close off this, this ticket. Um, but if they're not able to solve the problem, they then can escalate it to the level two support person. Now, the level two support person will go ahead and, and work on that problem. They'll provide a solution and then they can send it to the customer to confirm that the solution is acceptable. Now, when it gets to the customer, the customer might decide, yep, that's perfect, fixed. We'll, we'll just close it off and complete it. Um, but there also might be the scenario where the customer says, well, hang on, you haven't quite fixed the problem. There's still something broken and they can send it back to the support person to have another look. They have another look, send it back to the customer and, and then it gets marked as completed. Um, so the, the complete is, is where this workflow would end in most cases, but I've also added a delete and archive there. And, and that's just for a bit of housekeeping later on. Um, one thing I found with this workflow is because it stores all the content in the articles, um, if you don't have the delete or archive states in there, it'll stay in that articles forever. And uh, there might be a scenario where you want to clean up and, and get rid of these uh, requests out of there. So having the delete and, and archive and, and other actions like that at the end of your workflow is, is always quite handy. So we're going to build this today just using the, the Joomla core features. We're not going to use any third party extensions at all. And just a reminder that Joomla is in beta, so you shouldn't use it on production sites yet, but feel free to go along and, and play. And uh, once it's released uh, officially, then, then you can start using it in production sites. 
So the first thing we're going to do to build our application is create a new category. So that's the same way as you do it in Joomla 3, you go into your categories, click on the new button and just give it a name. So in this case, I'm going to call this category support request. And I'm also going to change the access to registered. Um, by default, the access is public. Um, but by changing it to registered, it means that guests and anonymous users on the site can't access this category. Only people that are logged into your site can access it. So that's why I've set it to registered there. Next thing I'm going to do is create a custom field group. So I'm also going to call this custom field group support request. And, and this is what I'm going to put the custom fields in uh, so that they're grouped together. So custom fields have been in Joomla 3 for, for quite some time, since 2017. Um, and th there's a lot you can do with it. I'm only doing some really basic things in, in this application. So what I'm doing here is creating those three fields that we need on the form. The, the problem description where the, the customer can fill out their issue of, of what the, the problem they're experiencing. Um, the solution field, which is also a text area, and that's for the help desk or the support level to, to support to fill out the details of the solution they provided, how they fix the problem. And then we've got the complete date so that they can um, record what date the, the, the issue was solved in case they need to do any reporting on this later on to, to measure the time from when the ticket was open to when it was closed, that sort of thing. Now, uh, each of these custom fields, we're going to put it into um, the support request category. So any articles that are created in that support request category will have these fields and any articles created in it, any other categories won't have these fields. And we're going to group them in the field group support request, that custom field group that we created. And in that way, they'll all appear on the same tab um, with that, uh, that title uh, support request. Now, if you want to learn more about custom fields, I'm not going into it to them in any more detail than what I've just talked about there, but Mark's talk last month was fantastic and he goes into a lot of detail about what you can do. Um, so if you didn't see last month's talk, go along and, and watch the YouTube channel and um, make sure you subscribe while you're there and uh, you'll find out a lot more about what you can do with custom fields, which is pretty powerful. So now that we've got our custom fields, uh, the next thing we're going to do is create some user groups. Now I've put the workflow at the, the top corner there just so you can uh, remember what we're trying to achieve here. But in this particular example, we've got three main users for our workflow. We've got the customer who creates a support request. We've got the help desk person that processes a request and then the level two support that um, solves a request. Um, so th there isn't any other people involved in, in this process. So we're going to create a, a custom user group for, for each of those. Now, when you install Joomla 4 and, and you start playing around, you might think, well, where, where's this workflow feature you're talking about? It's just not there. I can't see it. Um, they've actually hidden it by default. So you have to turn it on before you can see it. The way you turn it on is you go into your articles, into the options button, and then on the integrations tab within the options, there's a little flag that you set, enable workflow, that you just um, change it from no to yes. And once you've done that and saved it, then you'll suddenly see that the workflow features appear in, in Joomla. And uh, I, I think in the alpha version, you didn't have to do this. So this is one difference from, from back uh, last year. So if you look on the left there under content, um, now just underneath uh, featured articles, you can see the workflow section that, that wasn't there before, now that we've turned that on. And out of the box, it comes with a basic workflow. And, and this is the workflow that recreates how Joomla 3 works. So with the published, unpublished, archived, trashed, and um, the transitions between those. Um, so you probably shouldn't touch that unless you know what you're doing, because that's going to affect all articles on the site, uh, not just um, this particular uh, one. So what we're going to do now is create our own new workflow, just hitting the new button. And we're going to give it a name support request because that's the application that we're, we're trying to build here. Um, so but besides giving it a name, you don't really need to, to do too much else at this point. Um, when you create the, the workflow, you'll notice that there's stages and there's transitions. 
Um, stages is where we want to start out going. So you click on the, the little number, uh, you'll see the number one that indicates that there's one stage in there by default. And so when you click on that, that number one, you come into the stage section. Now there's a stage in there called basic stage that's in there by default. And in this case, I've renamed that stage to be level one help desk because that's the first stage. Once a customer fills out the form and submits it, uh, it's going to go into that level one help desk uh, stage and uh, for that level one help desk person to uh, uh, process a request. You don't need the stage for the creating the request because when you create it, it's got no status. It's just a blank form. Once you save it the first time, then it goes to that first stage. And you'll notice that that's set as default, um, that little gold star there. So that will be when you create a new article in the support request category, it's going to automatically go to that that level one help desk state. So I'm going to go ahead and create all the states for the workflow. So you can see here we've got level one help desk, level two support, customer confirm, uh, all, all the different states that we're trying to go back and forth with, with their workflow, including the archive and, and delete. You can call these whatever you like, um, but Obviously, if it's a name that makes sense, it's going to be a bit easier when, when you go to use it. So now that we've created our stages, you'll see that that number has now increased to eight because we've got eight stages. And the next thing that we want to do is go into transitions. And the transitions, at, at the moment, there's no transitions. So we can click on that number zero and go in and, and start creating our transition. So each of these steps that we're going from one step to the other, we need to create the transition. So the, the first one we're gonna create is escalating to level two support. So that's when the level one help desk sends it to the level two support. Um, you can give it whatever descriptive name you like there, but uh, something that makes sense, makes it a bit more user friendly when you're using the form. Uh, so in the transition tab where defining what the current stage is and what the target stage is. So the current stage is where we are right now. And right now we're at level one help desk and we're moving to level two support stage. So we're just saying that this stage goes from that stage to that stage. And you'll notice there's some other tabs in there now. There's transition actions, notifications and permissions. Um, back in the alpha version, this logic wasn't in there. Um, the email notifications are done a little bit differently and the actions were in the stages. So they've been now moved to the transitions, which uh, makes a bit more sense. Uh, so once we've given it a name, define the, the current stage and the target stage, the next thing that we're gonna do is set the publishing state. So this determines when um, we go from, to this stage, uh, what state do we want our content to be in it? Do we want it to be unpublished, published, um, archived, trashed, uh, any of those standard states? There's also a setting there for featured state. So you know in an article how you can set it as a featured article. You can do the same with this workflow. So when it goes to this transition state, uh, you can make it automatically become a featured article, uh, maybe when it's completed a workflow or whatever. But um, in this particular example, we don't need that. So we're just gonna leave that as, as none selected. The next tab is the notification tab. And, and, and this is for email notifications. When it's moving to this uh, state, uh, transitioning to this state, um, we can have an email notification go out. So there's a little flag there that you can send email notif notification, change that from no to yes. And you can put in some text uh, that will be included in, in the, the body of the email so that the person receiving the email knows what it is about and what they need to do. Um, then you've got a choice of who you're going to send this notification to. You can either send it to user groups or you can send it to individual users. Now, this is one area where I think the Joomla 4 workflow is lacking a bit at the moment um, because what happens if I wanted it to send to the author of the, the form? Um, I, I can't do that at the moment um, out of the box. Uh, you could probably write your own plugin to do it. But uh, at the moment, if I wanted to send this to the customer, I can send it to everyone in the customer group, but I can't just send it to one individual customer. Um, 
it's yeah not not that great but in in this case what we're doing here is we're sending it to all the people in the the level two support uh group so that uh once we progress it from the level one help desk to level two support anyone in that support team can pick up the uh the, the ticket and, and do something with it then we've got the permission tab now the permission tab defines who can transition this state so we don't want the customer to be able to escalate it from the level one help desk to the level two help desk. So the customer uh, group would have deny for the execute transition, but we do want the help desk person to be able to transition this state. So we need to allow the execute transition permission for the help desk team. Um, the level two support, we may not want them to, to be able to escalate it. It's, it's really depending on the scenario, what you're trying to achieve, but uh, it's important that you have at least one group that can execute that transition. Otherwise you get stuck in a state and no one can move it and do anything with it. Okay, so you repeat that for each of the transitions that, that we have here. So um, the example that I showed you there was a level one help desk to, to level two support, but um, then we need a transition from level two support to customer confirm. Um, we need one from the customer confirm back to the level two support as well. So when the customer gets the, the, the issue resolved, they have a look at it and don't think the problem is solved properly, they can send it back to that support team. So uh, basically each arrow that we've got in, in that workflow there, we need to define the transition for. So this one, we've got it both ways. A lot of these others are just one way arrows that can only go in one direction. Um, so it, it's up to you which ones you want to trigger email notifications uh, and and who has the permission to do those transitions. So the next thing we want to do is go back into that category that we created earlier and on the workflow tab, change it to the support request workflow that, that we created for our application. This way, whenever an article is created in the support request category, it will automatically use our workflow instead of the default workflow. Um, if you don't change this, then it's just going to use the, the, the normal Joomla workflow. So the other thing we want to do while we're in our category is adjust permissions. And there's a few permissions in here that, uh, that we may want to adjust. Um, in, in our case, we want the customer to be able to create new support requests. So we're giving them the create permission. Um, we also want them to be able to edit their own because later on they need to go in and uh, confirm that the issue is solved and, uh, and, and either complete it or send it back to support. And they need the edit state permission to be able to um, progress it between uh, the different states. Now, depending on what you're trying to achieve, you, you can have different permissions here. Um, you can see here the customer doesn't have the ability to delete a request. Um, in some cases, you may want to give them that permission, but um, I'm, I'm not giving them in this case. And I'm not giving them the edit permission. I'm only giving the edit own. So they can't edit other people's requests. They can only edit their own requests. And just looking at some permissions here, I've set for the level one help desk and level two support. You can see here, I haven't given the level one support access to delete, but I've given the level two support access to delete. Um, so it, it's really up to you what permissions you set for these different groups of people, depending what you're trying to achieve. So the next thing we want to do is in the article permissions. Now this one is really important because if you don't do this, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Now, if you go into your articles, your com content, and go into options, and go into the permissions tab, we want to give our uh, support request customer group access to edit custom field value. Now, the reason we want to do that is because we've got a form with custom fields in it, and by default, a user only has read-only access to custom fields on the front end. So if they were to create a new article and they didn't have this edit custom field value, they wouldn't be able to fill out that problem description field that, that we created on our form. And we also need to give them the execute transition permission. That allows them to execute the workflow permission and change it uh, from one state to another. So the, the scenario that they're going to need to do that is when they get sent the request to confirm that the problem solved, they will need to uh, either complete the request or send it back to that level two support. And to do that, they need to execute transition to be able to progress it to that next state. So it's, it's really important that, that you set those for, for all the groups of people using you know, your application. 
Okay, now that we've done all that set up, um, the next thing we're going to do is create a menu on the front end of our site. So you just go into your, your menus, create a new menu. Um, in, in this case, we're uh, calling the, the menu support request. Um, you might call it um, create a new support request or wh whatever you want to do, but this is essentially you're going to allow the customer to, to create that, that um, new support request. And the type of menu that we're using here is uh, articles create article. Then on um, the access, we're going to set that to registered so that anonymous users don't have access to create these um, these forms, are only uh, people who are logged into the site. And then on the option tab, we're going to set a specific category. So when a new article is created from this menu item, it will automatically default to this support request category rather than a, a normal article. So that way we'll see all our new custom fields and, and have that workflow attached to it. So if we have a look at the, the front end of the site, um, if you're not logged in, all you see is the home there. Uh, as soon as you log in, then you can see that support request menu item that, that's just been added. And this is just a default front end template for, for Joomla 4. Um, obviously, your site would look much nicer than this. Okay, so w when you click on that um, support request to create a, a new request, it comes up and it looks a lot like an article. Um, so you've got the, the title, um, you've got the alias, the, um, the main body of the article, and it's not until you click on that support request tab, um, which is our custom field group, that you'll see those custom fields that we created where we've got the problem description, the solution and completed date. Uh, and, and then on the publishing tab, you'd see the, um, the state, the published, unpublished, all that sort of stuff. And um, also the workflow transitions are on that publishing tab as well. And then you've got the metadata as well that you'd see in, in any normal article. And for, for an application like this, it's not very user friendly to, to give a, a user this sort of stuff. We only want to show them the information that's relevant to them and hide everything else. So the way we're going to do that is using template overrides. So what we do here is we go into our template and uh, click on the, um, the, the, the template and then click on create overrides. Um, under the component section, click on com content. And in this case, we're going to update the form because it's a form that's used when you create a, a new article. Um, and, and that's what we're going to override and, and customize. Now, if you click back on the editor tab, you can go into your HTML folder. That's where all your overrides are going to be um, in your template. And then com content, because that's the component that we're overriding. Form, because that's the, um, the view that we're overriding. And then edit is the file that, that we've uh, just created by clicking that um, create override button. So we can go into this edit file and customize it to suit our needs. Now, th this is something that's um, fairly technical, so only people that are familiar with coding would really be able to do. Um, an average administrator that doesn't have any coding skills at all um, would really struggle for this bit. But uh, assuming that you knew a little bit of coding, you can go in there and, and hack the override. And um, for anyone who's not familiar with overrides, basically what overrides do is they allow you to customise some of the functionality of Joomla, but they don't get overwritten whenever you update. So if you were to go in and hack the, the Joomla core files and then upgrade your Joomla version, all those changes that you hacked in would be lost and it would revert back to the original version. But by doing an override, um, these ones load up instead of those core ones and allow you to, to customize the functionality. And, and that way, um, when you make changes, you're not going to lose them every time you upgrade. So. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of, of what I did to customize this because that's probably a bit beyond the scope of this talk. Um, but just from a high level, what I did was put in there, if a category equals, um, I think it was number eight or whatever the category number was, then do this. If it's not equal that, then do something else. So, so that way I'm not breaking the standard articles. I'm only customizing it for my particular category. Um, I, th I think Mark's talk um, about custom fields went into a bit uh, about overrides in there. So you can learn a bit more of the technical details there if you, if you like. So once we've made these changes, um, this is what the form looks like now. So basically hidden that first tab, hidden the publishing tab and the metadata tab, um, still showing the title at the top there and just showing our custom fields, the problem description, the solution, the completed date. 
And then at the bottom, you can see there's our workflow transition where we can show what um, stage of, of the workflow that, that we're in currently. And, and then you've got the buttons at the bottom there to, to save or, or cancel. So the next thing we want to do is create a view. So when someone creates a support request, um, they may want to go back in and, and have a look at their support request, um, see what the solution that's been provided by the help desk, or um, they may want to uh, make some changes, uh, anything like that. So we're going to create a my support request view. Now this time the menu item type is a category list and we're only going to show articles in the support request category because they're the ones that are part of our application. We don't care about articles in any other category. And we're going to set the access to registered so anonymous users and people not logged in can't see these records, only people logged into the site can see it. Um, you can also go into the list layouts tab within your menu item and, and customise some of the columns that are appearing in, in the view. Um, things like hits um, show by default, so I turn that off. Um, I, I think I turned on the author, so I could see who created um, the record and I've got the date that it was created, that sort of thing. So when I look at my view, this is what it looks like. I can see it's got the title of the support request, the date it's created, who created it, and there's a, an edit button there. Now, if, if I was building this as a, a real application, I'd probably override the view for this, uh, this category list as well and add in some extra information. Like I'd probably want to have a status column there so I can see what um, stage of the workflow this particular record's in and, and there might be some other customizations. But um, all I've done with this is uh, change the options available in, in the menu. Um, the other thing to be aware of at the moment is that there isn't any setting in the menu item to limit to only show records you've created. At the moment, this is going to show all the articles in that particular category. So as a customer, if I create a record and then another customer comes on, they create a record. At the moment, I'd be able to see both. Um, there is a way to limit that with a, a, another override that you can uh, customise it so you can only see your own. Um, and, and that's something I do in a real app. But in this example, I, I didn't bother. So when we click on this record to view it, it looks pretty terrible. <laughs> um, you, you can see that there's all the sort of standard stuff you'd see in, in, a, in a Joomla article, who it's written by, the category it's in, the published hits, all that sort of stuff. Um, we can easily turn that off in our menu item and, um, and, and control that information at the top there. But the, the information at the bottom there, that the problem description, solution and completed date, which are our custom fields, um, they look pretty ordinary. and uh, you'd want to tart them up a bit, make them look a bit nicer uh, for, for an application you're building. So once again, uh, we can do this with an override, but this time, instead of creating just a normal override, we're going to create an alternate layout. Now, alternate layouts are very much like template overrides, but the key difference is once you've created the template override, you give it a different name. And, and that way, uh, as an alternate layout, you can be a bit more selective in how you apply it. So you can have certain menu items that use this particular layout, but everything else uses the default layout. So in, in this case, we're going to go in to create overrides, com content, and click on article and, and create the layout override for article. But once that's created, we're going to go back into the editor. Um, HTML, com content, article, find the default.php file and rename it. And this name can be anything you like at all. Um, in this case, I'm calling it supportapp.php, but you could call it whatever you like. And once I've renamed it, then I'd go ahead and apply my customizations and um, make it look a, a lot nicer. And once I've done that, I will then go into the menu item for my view, my, my support request view that I created earlier. And on the options tab, I'm going to choose the layout and set my alternate layout that I've just created. So in this case, support app, um, you'll notice it drops off that .php. So whatever you call the file name, that's what you're going to see in, in that list there. So what, once again, customizing that override file, um, that alternate layout uh, requires a little bit of coding skill. So it's not something a, a typical administrator would be able to do, but anyone with a bit of coding skill, it's not that difficult. So now when we open up the, the view form, it looks significantly different. You can see I've turned off all those um, hits and um, 
date and all that sort of stuff. And you can see I've formatted the, uh, the, the custom fields a bit differently. Um, I'm, I'm not saying I'm, uh, I would design exactly like this, but I'm just showing a, a dramatic difference from what it was originally to, to how it is now. You can make this look however you like with your CSS skills and, and, and whatnot. But um, so, so this is a view form when someone clicks on a record to, to view it. Um, you probably also add in a bit more information like the, the name of the person that created it and um, the date it was created and, and the status that it's in and, and, and that sort of stuff. Um, but at the moment, it's just showing there my, my custom fields. So now that we've got uh, a, a, a sort of working app, um, we can make a few improvements on it as well. Uh, now we might have a whole bunch of users on our site and only some of them we want to access this application and some of them we don't want to access this application. Maybe it's a, a huge site and you've got a thousand users and you only want 10 of them to be able to create support requests or whatever. Um, or maybe it's a paid service where you're charging for, for this access. So what we're going to do is create an access level. We'll call it support request app. And the people that have access to this uh, access level um, are the customers, the level one help desk and the level two support, those three custom groups that we created earlier. And once you've created this access level, you can then apply it to your menu item and your category. So you, you go into that support request menu item that you created. Instead of having registered access, you change it to support request app and same with the my support requests and in your category as well. And, and so once you've done that, um, anyone that logs into the site, unless they're in one of these groups, they're not going to see the menu item and they're not going to see any of the, uh, the, the app at all. But anyone in those groups will, will see it. So then to, to try out our app, uh, I'm going to create three users. So I've created one user for each of the roles that we've got. I've created one customer, one help desk person, and one level two support person. So I've just given them some random names there. So now we're going to see this application in action. So the customer comes along, they, they click on the, uh, the support request link on the site, and that opens up the new form, and they can fill it out. So in this case, they have a problem with printing, and they put in a little description about what the, the problem that they're experiencing. And once they've done that, they, they click on the, the save button at the bottom there, which will then submit it to uh, the level one help desk. Now, in this status drop down at the bottom here, you'll notice the level one help desk is the default option because that's our default transition state for this workflow. Now, if the uh, customer clicks on that, there won't be any other options in that list because they don't have permission to, um, to do any other actions at this point. Um, and plus there is no other actions that, that come from this point. Um, there's no transitions that, that uh, start from the beginning besides that. So that's the only thing they can do. They submit that. And that can trigger an email to um, the, the help desk. And, and this is just a, a generic email that's um, built into Joomla. So if you wanted to change any of the text in this, you could do it with a language override. Um, if you wanted anything really sophisticated, you, you may have to write your own plugin or something to, um, to trigger a nice fancy email. But out of the box, th this is the sort of thing you'd get, um, just saying that a, a new record's been created. Um, it's got the title of it and, and a link to that, that record. Now the level one help desk receives it and they can see the information that the, the customer has uh, filled out on the form. And then they've got a, a choice of what they want to do. They, they can either reject it, they can ask for more information, they can escalate it onto the level two support, or they can immediately complete it if it's something they can fix quite quickly. So when they click on that, um, that status link at the bottom there, you, you'll see they've got a lot more options and they can choose which one of these stages they want to transition to. So um, they could select any of these and then just hit save and then that would send it off to, to that state. Now, if a customer was to log in and go into their My Support Requests and click on that record to have a look at it, they wouldn't have any other um, status there because they don't have permission to um, do any of these transitions. We, we, we denied the customer permission to escalate to level two support and they can't reject it or anything like that. So they can't do anything with it. And 
the level two support person, if they were to do the same, go into the My Requests and click on the link and see what they can do. Um, we have given them the permission to escalate it to level two support, but we haven't given them the, the permission to reject or, or ask for more information or immediately complete it. So it, it's up to you what permissions you want to give different groups of users and it's, it's very customizable. So once the help desk person um, escalates it to the level two support and, and sends it off, it uh, triggers an email. Now you'll notice that in the transition that we set up earlier going from level one help desk to level two support, there was an area where we could put in the custom text for the email. And so basically what it does is it just tacks it on the end here. It's got the, um, the title of the record, who, um, who changed it, what the, the state is now, and then the, the custom text that you've added in there. So if you want to change any of this other information here, you'd need to do it with a language override. Um, and you can put a lot more than just one line of text here, but that's just a, an example of what you can do. And it's also got the, the link to the, the record. Okay, so once it's received by the level two support person, um, they can open up the request and uh, they may put in their solution, uh, they fix a problem and they can set the date that they've completed it this date. And then that level two support person decides what to do. Now, the only option they've got is to send it to customer for UAT. Because if you look here at this level two support, that's the only arrow that's coming off it. Um, that's the only transition that we set up. So they can't reject it, they can't delete it, they can't immediately complete it, they have to send it to the customer because that's the way we, we design this particular workflow in the transitions. And then once the customer receives it, um, they've got two options there. They can either uh, reopen the support ticket, which sends it back to the level two support. <clears throat> that, that's the name that I gave that tra transitional state that puts it back to level two. And th they can also confirm the issues resolved. And the confirm issue resolved will uh, just send it to the complete state. So it will close off this issue. <clears throat> So once it gets to the complete state, if um, anyone opens it up, they can see all the information that's been filled out on that form and that this, the status area is complete. Uh, if the customer opened it up and, and they clicked on that status, they wouldn't have any options to do anything else because they don't have permissions to do anything else after complete. Whereas um, the level two support person, if they go in, they would have the option to delete it or to archive it. You'd also note things like version control, um, which is a standard feature of articles that you can turn on if you like, and, and you can see exactly who did what, when they did it, what they changed, or all that sort of uh, nice stuff. And also the ability to roll back versions if needed and, and that sort of thing. So th that's sort of the end of, of this demo of, of an application. And hopefully this gives you some ideas of, of what you can do with a workflow um, beyond just doing normal articles. So you, you can actually build applications in it. Um, but there's a few limitations that I, that I found uh, playing around with this. So I mentioned earlier about the emails in the transitions, how you don't have the ability to send it to the person who created the record. You can only send it to a, a group of people or a specific user. So um, if we had 10 customers and they're in a, a, a group um, called customers, uh, and we wanted to send the request back to the customer for them to uh, verify the solution, then it would go to all 10 customers. It wouldn't go to one specific customer. So um, you could probably get around that with your own um, notification plugin, but that would require some custom coding um, out of the box. That's something that's just not there. So that's something I'd like to see in a future version, perhaps. Um, so when we're looking at the template overrides and, and the alternate layouts, they obviously require a bit of coding skills. So it's not something um, a, a normal administrator or a, um, a typical user would be able to do. Only someone with a bit of coding skills like yourselves would, would probably be able to do it. Um, so that may limit who can build these type of applications. Um, 
The other thing to be aware of is that all the records that are created are stored in com content in, in your articles uh, section. So if someone fills out this form and submits it, you're going to see that as your most recent article sitting in, in your article list there. So uh, if you've got lots of different applications, um, that could get quite messy in there and, and you'd have to rely on the filters to filter out categories and all the search to find what you're looking for when you're updating other content on the site. Um, now, th this is something WordPress has been doing for, for many years, putting all their application content in, into the one table. Um, from a usability point of view, I, I guess uh, it saves having to create that custom table and, and fields and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it does give you all the, the features of articles out of the box without having to do anything like version control and, and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it, it's just something to be aware of if, if you are using this feature, that's where all your data is going to go. Uh, it may be a bit trickier to report on it later on and that sort of stuff. Um, I mentioned before about the my support request view, that category list that I created before and how I set it to only show the articles in this support request category. Um, at the moment, uh, the way that I just demonstrated here, anyone can see every single record that's created in, in that category. Um, they may not have the permission to edit it because uh, I may not have given them edit permission, but they'd be able to view other people's support tickets and that, which you, you really wouldn't want in a, a live help desk system. Um, but y you can override that with a, another layout override and there's a, a couple lines of code you can add into uh, if, if you're the author of the article and you're in the customer group, then only show your own records. Um, but if you're in the help desk group, you show all the records, that sort of thing. So it, it is possible, but a little bit more coding involved there. And the other thing I noticed when I was playing around with this is that um, records can get checked in or, or checked out. Um, uh, they can get stuck in that checkout state. Like, you know, when you go into an article, you open it up and then maybe you click the browser, the, the back browser button or you close your web browser window. Um, the next person that comes along tries to open up that record, it'll say that it's locked and, and it won't let them open it up um, because you need to uh, use one of the buttons at the top to, to save it or close it, which will then check it back in. Um, or you go into your global check-in and, and check in the records and, and unlock them. So um, you've got the risk here of um, like a customer opening up a request in the, the My Support request view and having a look at it and then just closing the web browser window and that record's going to get locked out to that customer and until an administrator goes in and unlocks that record, um, the support people can't go in and, and process it. So um, that, that could be an issue and, and you may need to find some sort of workaround for that. Um, I'm not sure if there's any way to turn off that checkout feature, um, but yeah, it's just something to be aware of. Um, yeah, so that's about all the stuff I was going to show you today. Do we have any questions on any of that or any comments or anything you want to talk about? Thank you, Tim. Well done. That was good. Um, the only thing I'd say with the manage my own thing is you can, if you don't want to code, use the, um, the, the article's latest module allows you to set um, just to view articles only created or modified by the by the by the author and you can embed that in a in an article or something as a screen so that um, they can see just the stuff they've created yep yeah that could be a good way of doing it I do that because I'm not a coder <laughs> <laughs> and there's always more than one way to do everything and uh, yeah it's good that there's a feature that does that no, I was only looking in what were the available options in that category list uh, menu items so yeah yeah that looks really good Looking forward to it actually happening. Mm. Thanks to everyone who's subscribing to the YouTube channel too. We've been trying to get 100 for about 18 months now. So. Oh, we've got 100 now. Awesome. Woo! No. We get a custom <laughs> URL. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, I've got, can I come uh, in with a, a couple of things? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, Phil, yeah. Phil, start by introducing yourself. It's unfair for you to come and fly in from London and <laughs> just ask random questions without people knowing who you are. Okay, so my name's Phil. Uh, I've got a Joomla website. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Phil I'm the CMS, okay, I'm the CMS release lead, so when it all goes wrong, it's my fault that the team didn't spot the bug. Or... <laughs> 
every other week, when every six weeks when it goes right, we've saved you from a few bugs. Um, depends on your point of view. Um, so, and I also run the Pizza Bugs and Fun. Uh, well, I help Benjamin with Pizza Bugs and Fun, and I'm running the um, Bugs and Fun at home with Patrick. Um, so, yeah, quite a bit of involvement. Um, yeah, a couple of things. One is um, Benjamin actually, you were saying about the um, there's a few lacks, like the ability to email a specific pe person. And I work with Benjamin quite a lot on the testing of this and, and, and um, many hours chatting it all through. And he would actually totally disagree. He'd say he's created a phenomenal ecosystem opportunity. So his <laughs> idea is that basically you would write that plugin. Uh, he's built the whole system to be as flexible as you like. And we sat down and we, we thought it through. We was like, oh, my days, there's so many things you can do. So you might get to a stage and it might be pushed to social media and you could write a plugin that pushed it to social media. It's very flexible. So I agree, you know, that would be a great plugin. Put it in there, put it on the ecosystem. It becomes part of the workflow plugin system. Um, you know, he, he, four one will be out straight after four. You could probably get it into four one. So I look forward to seeing you writing it. Um, <laughs> and and it's seriously, everybody just write, you know, what you feel you need. And the idea is that, that there's nothing worse than writing lots of bloatware and people never using it. But if people write plugins because they need it, and they will rise to the top, then people can put them in if they need them. So you only need to put those plugins in if you need. And the other thing was the layouts. I was really nice going, you went through the whole process, which was great. And you touched on so many areas. Um, one thing that um, I'm a real top when it comes to templates. So I used to be rocket theme, then I was youth theme, then I was gym sh uh, shaper. And now I'm back to youth theme because they have done a lot with custom fields. So you can narrow stuff down onto custom fields and you can even do clauses, conditions. So you can say, show this article if a custom field has a value that is or is not this. So you could actually do the whole of that without a template override on the front end, the article part, by using a template that, that can do those rules with custom fields. Um, I was actually in my head kind of going through it. Oh, yeah, you could do that with you thing. So there are non-programmable alternatives out there with some of the more advanced templates. Awesome. That's, that's really good to know and uh, great information. What I was showing was just out of the box features and yeah. absolutely with third party templates and extensions, you can do so much more, but yeah, that's, that's a really good point that some templates have that capabilities. And if anyone's keen to work on documenting those particular ways of writing a workflow component. Um, that's one of the areas lacking in the Joomla documentation at the second. Um, so uh, you could easily pick that up and, and run with it as a um, pizza, bugs and fun project if you wanted, um, uh, along with any other documentation. Uh, there's, there's plenty of gaps in there at the moment. Yeah, as I was going to say, Benjamin's often in the Pizza Bugs and Fun on a Saturday. Uh, sorry, on the Bugs and Fun at home. So, I mean, seriously, if you wanted to write the plugin, it would be the perfect thing to do. Join in around about <laughs> 10 o'clock when he's awake and, um, yeah. and write it. You know he had him in here tonight, but uh, he's got a work meeting. So it's four o'clock in Germany. In the after uh, no, that's not right. No, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning in Germany. Um, yeah, oh, 11, sorry, it feels muted there. 